in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Welcome all here today uh, on the Feast of St. Irenaeus of Lyon. St. Irenaeus was um, a bishop, confessor, and doctor of the church, and is uh, one of whom we call the Apostolic Fathers. He was born in uh, Asia Minor in the year 125, and he was a disciple of St. Polycarp, who himself was a disciple of the Apostle St. John. Uh, so the Apostolic Fathers are those men who either knew the Apostles directly or who knew somebody who knew the Apostles directly. So we have a whole category of saints in the church uh, that are that link between uh, Christ and the Apostles and then the rest of the church. They're called the Apostolic Fathers, and St. Irenaeus is one of them. So um, uh, St. Irenaeus was a young man and learned from St. Polycarp, and uh, after the death of St. Polycarp, St. Irenaeus uh, went around to as many of the other elders in the area, that town, as he could, finding out everything that they had been taught by the apostles. It wasn't just the, the bishops and the priests who knew the apostles, the whole town, right? Everybody. And all these people had been taught by the apostle John. St. Irenaeus went around finding out from them, what did he tell you? Uh, so a great, great witness to tradition. Uh, and as, if we, were, we re recall that St. John, with the death of St. John the Apostle, was closed the deposit of faith. God was directly revealing truths to the Old Testament prophets. Uh, he himself came in the form of Christ our Lord. And then the apostles were also receiving direct revelation from God. Uh, once St. John uh, died upon his death, God was no longer depositing anything into the faith. From then on, it would be up to the church and, and the men in the church to explain the deposit of faith. This is what God has given us. What, do, what can we learn from that? What can we draw out of it? So no new deposits are being made. So St. Irenaeus, eventually, um, having learned exactly from all these people, what is that deposit? What did St. Uh, John tell you all? Eventually, he ends up traveling to France, uh, to the city of Lyon, uh, then in the territory of the Gauls. He was ordained a priest by uh, the local bishop and served uh, for many years faithfully. In the year 177, St. Irenaeus was sent to Rome on a mission to the Pope, and in the meantime, while he was gone, uh, persecution broke out. This is under the reign of Marcus Aurelius, the emperor. And when uh, St. Irenaeus returned from Rome, he found that the Bishop of Lyon and many other priests had been martyred. So he himself was then made bishop. As I mentioned, this was in the territory of the Gauls and they were suffering uh, very much from that time, uh, at that time from superstition, paganism, and also Gnosticism. Uh, the, these, these two errors had kind of combined to make this strange version of Catholicism. So this is, this is being uh, taught and attempted to be, people are being swayed by these arguments. And these heretics are uh, uh, explaining scriptures. They are uh, pointing out in scripture, offering explanations of them in defense of their heretical positions. Uh, so this is where St. Irenaeus really becomes for us a testament to the Catholic Church. And as it was mentioned, a, a witness to tradition in that he is one of the very first to explain and defend uh, what we now know are pillars of orthodoxy, and that was the uh, scripture, tradition, and the magisterium. Uh, he, he, he argued these that, um, he, the explanation of them is that uh, if you cannot, uh, ex if you can't find something in scripture, uh, don't believe it, right? But if in, in your explanations of scripture, you don't have a tradition, you, you can't trace that back through an apostle or, or to Christ, and you, if you yourself don't have a connection to Christ or one of the apostles, uh, then you, you can't be believed, right? You don't have apostolic succession. And furthermore, the magisterium, which is the teaching authority of the church, what are all the bishops teaching, all those bishops who do have apostolic succession, what are they teaching, and what are the people believing and if you, if you are contradicting that, if you are not believing that yourself, uh, you should not be believed. So that, that is the, the scripture tradition and the magisterium. And St. Irenaeus is one of the, the very first to explain and, and to defend that. Uh, in fact, he did such an excellent job that later on, when the Protestant heresy was starting to arise in the 1500s, 
uh, his works, St. Irenaeus's works, were so clear and, and so direct that these Protestant heretics said, well, that, that obviously can't be what St. Irenaeus himself wrote because it's, it's too developed. We know that these, these arguments didn't come about until later on, so uh, some copyists must have made an error later, or they inserted these in the Middle Ages to suit the, the, the developing Catholic doctrine. Right? That, that's how error works. It, it refuses to accept even clear evidence uh, of its own um, uh, inauthenticity. And, you know, some might say that uh, this, is how you, this is how you can tell authentic, um, we would say, um, what, what's the term I'm looking for? Uh, he was inflexible, unyielding in the truth. And sometimes people who are rigorous will appear that way. We want to be firm with the truth and unyielding because of principle, but people who are rigorous uh, are unyielding in everything, right? It's not principle, it's just that they have that kind of a temperament. And the proof that St. Irenaeus, uh, that was not how he was, is that he was absolutely strict and um, inflexible when it came to heresy, but when there were other errors, uh, he was more forgiving because it wasn't a matter of principle, it wasn't a matter of truth. An example of that was what's called the Quarto Deciman controversy, which was certain uh, sects of the church were celebrating Easter uh, according to a different method. Their Easter was different from the whole rest of the church, and uh, Pope Victor I wanted to excommunicate them because what, what would be more a greater sign of unity or disunity than not celebrating Easter on the same day as everybody else, the most central feast of the church. So the Pope wanted to excommunicate them, but it was St. Irenaeus who said, look, I don't like it, I don't agree with it, but don't excommunicate them. This is not a matter of principle. It's not a matter of, of truth or of doctrine or of dogma. It's just they have a different way of calculating it. They claim to have received that way from one of the apostles. Uh, so he was, he was very uh, um, reasonable in terms of uh, um, where, what he was rigorous about, what he was unyielding about. And that would be the proof that when he was rigorous, uh, when he was inflexible, it was something important. Uh, that, that, that's a principle to, 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 to keep in mind. Discernment, prudence. Uh, so, uh, and, and again, this is uh, his works that in which he compiled m most of his writings is called Adversus Hereticus, and it stands today as one of the best uh, witnesses to tradition, uh, to those very early um, understanding of the church of her identity as the guardian of truth, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the handing on the truth, the preser preserver of truth, and that it's one, the Catholic doctrine is one. It doesn't change over time, it doesn't mutate, it develops, but you don't add anything new and you don't contradict with what came in the past. And, and St. Irenaeus is a great witness to that. And I would say we, would, we, we could use his intercession uh, very much these days when people just everywhere in the Catholic Church, bishops themselves are heaping, uh, having itching ears, heaping to themselves false doctrines. We, we see that all over. One of the signs of the church should be unity, and we see very little of that in the church these days. Uh, but that this too shall pass. Uh, the church has gone through rough times before, uh, but it's, it's men like St. Irenaeus, uh, those fathers and doctors, those apostolic fathers in the past uh, that give us what we need today to be firm in the faith. Uh, so do not fear. Uh, say your daily prayers. Pray for the intercession of the saints that God will raise up in his church uh, good, strong, holy priests, holy bishops who will return us to the practice of orthodoxy. God bless you all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.